let me ask you about what happened with Lee Zeldin. So yeah. you have this guy with uh, cat ears. You know, I wouldn't call it. Uh, people are referring to it as a bladed weapon. Is that fair to say? Do you think? Would you? Would you consider I, so it? it's a self-defense device, but I mean, it it is. You know, it would if if he had hit his you know neck, neck or yeah. artery or something, he could have bled out. I mean, there's there's no doubt this is a very dangerous situation. Um, I you see this stuff, and it happened what a couple months. A couple months ago, we just saw some guy try to assassinate Kavanaugh, or at yeah. least made great strides to get to that point. Yeah, no, I mean, I, again, I, I think, I think this, this, you know, culture of violence that we have right now, uh, and it's, you know, it's very broad, um, but you know, the political violence, I mean, it's just incredibly dangerous. Is this and, the... and it's, you know, is it, is it, you know, we talked about earlier, is it, is it going to be worth doing these jobs? You know, even exactly. being a public figure. I mean, it's just, it's not. Um, it, it will be if you're a communist. If you're if you're in a cult or you're ideologically driven. Like I, I just mentioned this guy. He's wearing the Black Lives Matter mask at Taco Bell and he says, fire me. I'm not taking it off. He's willing to throw himself, you know, on top of the of the issue. Because he, he'll sacrifice his position to wear that mask and they give it to him because of it. And so you look at now what's going on with uh, the violence You've got people on the left who are willing to destroy their careers or get paid almost nothing to be in that position, and the right's unwilling to do it. They're saying things like, you know what, it's easier and more comfortable just to get out of here and do something else, and that's why they lose. So now you see this guy who attacked Zeldin, and he says, he, I guess the latest report is that he didn't know who Zeldin was or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you go to a political rally the day, right. the, 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 day uh, the governor puts out a statement about the guy getting up on stage holding a weapon— and then trying yeah. to, and the telling him he's done, and then moving, gesturing. I'm being very careful here towards his neck with it, whether it was for the mic or for his neck, whatever. I don't, I don't think you just do that randomly. But these are people who, when when you get someone who's willing to sacrifice their their livelihood and their job or their own safety, these are people who are willing to wear all black and firebomb federal buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I gotta tell you, man, this is asymmetrical uh, culture war, where the right is like we're gonna win when regular people wake up to the gas prices. And it's like, yeah, I, I think <coughs> that's, that's, that's potentially true. A lot of people, working class families, are going to be looking at the $5 a gallon gas and the four, it's $4.30 average right now, and they're going to be very angry about it. But how many people are indoctrinated and don't care about gas at all? How many posts have you seen on Facebook where people say, I don't care about high gas prices. January 6th is more important because I see those all the time. I see people who, who care more. Who are your more. Facebook friends? Well, I've got thousands of people on Facebook <laughs> posting cleanse memes. that. Cleanse that list of crazy people. Well, even Biden said it's worth it so we could stick, take a stand for Ukraine. We did the right thing. Republicans and even people they the were right up before that even happened. Don't want to sacrifice anything. Yeah. And the left will sacrifice themselves. Well, they don't want to sacrifice. They have a lot to say. I mean, you know, a lot of Republicans are very successful or and have, you know, have ambition. I mean, the have goals and desires and, you know, want to accomplish things not only for themselves, but for their family and they want their family to be successful. So, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying. You know, there's there's so many of these people, uh, especially people, uh, many many Republicans retiring. They don't want to be involved in it at all. So they're like, I'm just going to retire. Yeah, because it's not worth the money. Maybe you made enough money. It is. It would be so easy for so many of these people. You don't need that much money to retire forever. And so what I see is... What is the number? To retire forever? Yeah. I mean, let's just look at the average retirement. If you wanted to be a regular person, you, you retire on half a million to a million. Mm -hmm. Now, most of these people in Congress, I think, what is like half of them are millionaires or some ridiculous number? Some huge Wouldn't surprise number. me. I mean, their, their retirement benefits are also very good. Right. Nancy Pelosi's net worth is $135 million. She could leave at any moment. She never has to work a day in her life. You just got two fridges full of ice cream, by the way. Yeah. Really expensive ice cream, yeah. too. Yeah. These are people who just Wait, want what? power. <laughs> Yeah, she, she made a video during the pandemic where like, people were hurting and broke. And she's like, look at my $15 ice cream. It's very good. And everybody was like, thanks. She's so disgusting. Oh, yeah. That's Nancy uh, Pelosi for you. She should retire. Well, what's even more disgusting is Tim doing Nancy Pelosi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, tr I, I tried. even I worse. Tried. Okay. I tried to make it even more disgusting. <laughs> that's how she talks. <laughs> Near yeah, the but, sides of the back of your tongue smacking on your inner cheek. The, the, the way I see it, man, is um, I get it. I get it. Yeah. You know, look, we, we here at Timcast, we're, we're successful. You know, so I hear it would be so easy for me. I to wish just, my podcast was as successful. We've got a bunch of new shows we're launching and, and um, I'm going to break down for everybody why we do what we do. Um, I think I mentioned this last week. 
TimCast.com. What was the first show that we launched? It was Tales from the Inverted World. True crime, mystery, history podcast. Why? They're very popular, particularly among women. We already have a, po a political podcast where we talk ad nauseum about all of these issues. <laughs> yes. Then we launched Pop Culture Crisis with Brett uh, Dasevic. We brought on Mary Morgan to co-host it because that's not political. Because the goal for the website isn't just to argue with people and say, hey, that thing they're doing on TV is dumb. And that thing that they said in Congress was stupid. It's like, we got to change culture. We got to change it all. But here's the crazy thing. It is people don't I don't think people understand how difficult it is to do all of this, how much time it takes, 16 hours a, a, a day, plus, you know, several hours on the weekends, every waking moment of my life on the phone, answering emails. And I got to figure out which emails to answer to make all of this work. And it would be so incredibly easy to cut everything down, do a single show and just be well off and say, why am I risking my neck and stressing myself out for people who won't do the same? Because I genuinely believe that there are a lot of people who listen who do want to do that. And so maybe there are a lot of people who are like, you know, those all that woke cult stuff is really bad, but I'm not going to I'm not going to get involved. Great. Well, I'm not talking to them, I guess. Maybe I'm trying to encourage them to stand up and change the world. But I think there are a lot of people who are like, I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm going to speak up and I'm going to make mm -hmm. a difference. And I'm like, well, then we got to have a space that allows for that to happen. And we got to encourage more and more people to get involved. So I'm, I'm more content doing that. Mm -hmm. As opposed to so many other people who, you know, they're, well, I don't want to be in government because it's not worth the pay. And then the Democrats try yeah. to destroy you. And then you look at what they put Brett Kavanaugh through. So there are certainly a lot of people who are standing up, who yeah. are pushing back and doing the right thing. And I can respect them. And I think we got to get more people to do it. But the way I see it with what we're doing at TimCast is at the very least, we're just going to create a cultural space to the best of our abilities. We're going to fight for it every day to not just be overtly political. Because one thing the right does and they do, they do terribly is they argue about what the left does instead of doing things. They say, Hollywood made a movie, the movie sucks. Okay, well, now you got the Daily Wire making their own movies. Timcast.com, we're starting to launch our own shows. That's the path. Mm -hmm. We create shows, we create culture, and we create a new place for people to go to get away from the influence of the Democrats and their psychotic cult. That, I think, is the path towards changing things. It is the hardest path possibly to take. So I totally get it. Why there are so many people who are like, I make good money. Why speak up? Yeah, and, and the and the frightening thing, I'm sure for you all, and, and I'm sure you know the reason you're trying to get more at on your website is because of how easy it is for big tech to deplatform you. Oh, hands I mean, down. I mean, Absolutely. it's just it's it's it, because you know there there are ways to monetize these types of things that are you know that are pretty good when you're on these platforms, but they can take it away tomorrow. And that's I mean that that's that's what. Anybody that wants to create a show or content or or do anything, I mean, you don't do obviously you don't do it for the money, but like that, I think that's a reward for being good. It's and it's not just about uh, like getting banned. It's about the manipulation, the shadow banning. Yeah. So you know, we we had a show called Cast Castle, which was like a vlog, and we did bits, and then we ramped up the joke because honestly, just it's fun to write jokes and act. Um, and then the issue is we can't do a lot of jokes. You get banned for it, or you could build your business up on their platform. They don't ban you. They just cut your money off yeah. after a decade of investment. And then your show's gone. And it's like, okay, why build up their platform? We'll build up ours. And so now, you know, this show is live on the front page of TimCast.com. We're doing a lot. We've done infrastructure. We've kicked PayPal off the website. PayPal and their censorious attitudes and Silicon Valley cultism. We now use Parallel Economy, which is co-founded by Dan Bongino and is censorship resistant. So my view is hopefully in five years, the big pop culture conversation is, oh yeah, that new movie that just came out on TimCast.com. And we're, we're not going to be overtly political. We don't make conservative content. We're not conservatives. Yeah. We just make content and it's not woke. And mm -hmm. we'll create a space to call out the lies the Democrats have been pushing. And look, I don't like the uniparty Republicans either, but yeah. the Democrats are the ones who control the cultural institutions that are burning everything down. You're right. You're right. That's what we do, I guess. Good. I love it. That's why I'm here. Yeah, I heard I'm, good I'm, things. Well, I'm, 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 I'm optimistic in that regard, but I also kind of feel like we're building an arc in a sense. Like mm. it's going to get way worse than it is now. A lot of people think that's pessimistic. I'm like, I don't look at it negatively. You know, I just look at, I think I look at it like mathematically. What's happening now culturally, culturally and politically is negative points towards the United States. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. That doesn't mean everyone's going to die and the sun's going to burn yeah. out and the planet's going to explode. No, there's still a Rome. There's still a Rome. There's or, just no Roman Empire. Well, you know, exactly. I mean, that's just you know, like that. It turned into a church, the Roman Catholic Church now. 
it's another kind of mental control. They, they couldn't do it militarily. It was too big. It splintered. So they just want to keep, yeah. keep that influence. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, my friend Rick Grinnell says often, you know, most uh, great civilizations have lasted about 250 years. We're, what, 246 right now? We're there. Yeah. And so we, we have the, the, the people of the United States are going to have to decide. And uh, yeah, I think there are a lot of headwinds in that regard. I also think, you know, we're the greatest idea ever conceived in human history. I, and I, so we'll see if we can, you know, as a people, figure it out. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be through legislation. I don't think we can legislate solution or print solutions with mm-hmm. the Federal Reserve. It's, it's industry, like actually making things like graphene. I, it's obsessive we've been talking about the last two years Graphic. to bring awareness we to it. have yeah. been obsessively talking oh, about I thought it. I, said, I have I have been <laughs> but I don't even are you familiar with the material it's now graphene time oh yeah. oh, oh uh, <laughs> check this out check this out you know to Ian's credit I got an ad for an electric bike it's range was 150 miles that blew my mind yeah because we've got some electric bikes the range is like 40 or 50 miles and it charges in 15 minutes it's incredible. 15 dude. minutes. So this is a bike. battery compound? It's or? Uh, pure carbon. It's pure just carbon. carbon. But, and but, it's hexagonally yeah. latticed like a honeycomb. Flat, one layer atomic thick. But and this, it's this, electrically conductive, capacitative like a battery. It's super, you can super so conduct with my, this stuff. my point, the bike uses a graphene battery. Dude, and it's you can pull carbon dioxide out of the air, put it on, condense it on a palladium, and then turn it into graphene. So we can basically mine the air, mine the carbon out of the air. We can mine the methane out of the air. And we're going to be end up competing with trees. So if we... We just need to renegotiate and, and bring awareness to the government, I think, to teach them about the 21st century industry. Well, isn't this the point I was trying to make earlier? And obviously you do it better with like a real technology, but it's, but human innovation is, you know, going to, because that doesn't that solve the excess carbon in the environment. If we're competing with trees, trees are the ones that are pulling out carbon but the, dioxide. But this is what we're running into because, because, because yes, right. We, we get carbon in the air and then like Ian says, we mine the air for carbon and we need more of it. We can't take too much. You run into people who post things and memes like Elon Musk is wasting money going to outer space. That money should be spent here in the, in the United States. And it's like, where do you think they spent the money? Do you think that Elon went to the moon and gave moon people our money? No, he hired American workers to work on American products, to machine yeah. American parts, to make an American spaceship. It goes up into space and then it comes back. These people don't understand. When we talk about new technologies, you are up against ideology versus innovation. And the ideologues are saying there's too much carbon, therefore shut everything down, mm-hmm. take away people's fuel, let the diabetics die when their refrigerators stop working and they don't have insulin anymore, and that will solve the problem. And then you have the innovators saying, can we, I don't know, mine carbon from the air to reduce the, the parts per million so that we can offset global warming, but then also use it for something innovative? No, they don't want to give you the chance. There are people who oppose human ingenuity and people who support it. And right now, the Democratic Party, what, what, what are we watching right now? Joe Biden selling off 20 million barrels of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. A decent amount goes to China. They say the reason is because China, it, it legally has to go to the highest bidder. So Europe and then China, they get it. And my question is, Joe Biden, if if if, if he comes Which out- Which makes no sense. I want to just hang a lantern on what you just said, which, yeah. which is true, but it makes no sense. It's the United States Strategic Petroleum right. Reserve. It's not supposed to be yeah. sold off. It's supposed right. to be used. It's not to be but they're auctioned. Trying, yeah. they're, they're trying to lower the prices. So the question is, you know, if Joe Biden comes out and says he's going to get us off fossil fuels, and then you see, I think, Germany, what, they shut down their nuclear plants, right? Is that what happened? I believe so, yes. I think so. You, I don't know. You want to fact check that? I have they, heard they, that. They did? Yep. They I'm, I'm wondering in, no. then... You know, they're not, they're, Greta Thunberg says, we don't want to wait until 2030. We want to stop fossil fuels now. And it's like, it just sounds like they want to kill people. That, that's all it sounds like. That we've got a food shortage coming and they say, stop farming. We've got a, a fuel crisis and they're saying, sell it off and shut down our power plants. And I'm like, you're just trying to get rid of humans. Bill Gates wrote four years ago, we have to stop poverty in Africa because they're having too many kids. So there'll be more poor people. And I'm like, so you're not saying kill them. You're saying don't let them exist in the first place. It sounds an awful lot like they're just nuking the system on purpose. I, I think a lot of it is ignorance. Like maybe there are some destructive people that want to wipe out a segment of the population just for whatever short-sighted w- desire. But the people that want to create less carbon don't seem to understand that we can pull it out of the atmosphere pretty readily. Well, that's the point. Ideology versus innovation. Mm-hmm. How do you convince a zombie horde screaming the end is nigh? 
that there are ways to solve these problems through technology. You can't. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.